Hi, this is Mark Patterson, University Ombuds for Cal State University Channel Island with another episode of Channel Our Potential, where I ask the question, what does it mean to you to channel our potential at CSU Channel Island? My guest today is Roxanne Baigel Coriel, who is a sustainability and energy manager for the university. She's been here since 2019. Roxanne grew up in Ventura County and received a bachelor's degree in environmental studies and community engagement from Chico State. She also received a master's degree from Southern Oregon University in management and a certificate in sustainability leadership. Roxanne previously worked at Southern Oregon University as the first sustainability and recycling manager. With that, turn to Roxanne. Hey, Roxanne, it's good to have you here. And uh, I wanted to say thanks for taking the time to be on the channel, Our Potential series. And I'm kind of excited to think that you know you and I started here at Channel Islands at about the same time. Got to know each other first at the newcomers orientation back in the ancient days of 2019. Wanted to kind of get a sense from you about you know what in your role as the sustainability and energy manager do you see as the the importance of making connections across campus. For my role, it's essential to everything that I do, because in order for our campus to be sustainable, it takes each and every one of us. It's not something that I can do alone, but it also requires me to really understand different aspects of the university and what kind of challenges we have, what kind of systems and processes we have, um, and what opportunities are there for us to improve on how we already do things. So it's really important to have those connections with people to understand what we're doing on campus and how we're doing it. And then also to have allies and to have people who can also help contribute to making our campus more sustainable. Mm, that's perfect. And you're, you're kind of capturing both the aspects of we're in this together, we can't do it alone, but also that that helps you find opportunities because you know better how things work. So let, let's go back a little bit. I know you you and your educational background had had us focus you know, from college days onward on sustainability, but what got you interested in, in the first place? Well, I really first discovered sustainability in college, which is part of why I really like working on sustainability in higher ed, because when I was a student at Chico State, I'm a CSU alum, um, I just happened to take a class on environmental literacy because it was the only thing left that fit in my schedule that also fulfilled general ed requirements. And it ended up being life-changing for me because I learned so much in that class about the impact that simple actions that we um, take in our lives can have on the environment. And of course, we all rely on this one planet to um, live as a species. And so really looking at how I could help make a difference in how we treat the planet, how we work with our systems. Um, it was like I finally found the place where I could do something that was important to me, that was helping to solve problems, and that was helping people, which brought it all together. I can see in students their passion and their interests, and when they get that experience to be able to try something out and learn about new issues, and then also helping on the more like the staff and faculty side of looking at as a business, how can we do things better and really be leaders and stand out? I like how you, init you noted initially the importance of how small things or little steps can make a difference in dealing with big issues. We, you know, we humans do tend to see big issues as like way beyond us, but you got that message early on that little things can, can really turn things around and giving back in higher ed where that inspiration came to you. Success for the GE program uh, is, is, a nice, is a nice touch as well. Mm -hmm. What about at, at Channel Islands? What are some uh, ways that you've found um, this idea of connecting or maybe also saying little steps can make a difference? I think at Channel Islands, because of our size, we're kind of like that small, medium size where we're still small enough that as a campus, we tend to know a lot of people and we all wear a lot of different hats. And so really connecting with people to understand what different people do, what different areas of campus, what kind of services they provide and how to get things done. So having those connections is so vital, no matter what 
the role is on campus, but it also helps for us to work as a whole system and like as a whole family on the campus when not only do I value you and your time more, I can also direct people to you who maybe can benefit from your services. And it just provides us all a bigger picture of what we're all working together towards. You've mentioned, we've talked before about some initiatives or platforms that have helped move that along. You know, we humans, again, we see big problems. It seems insurmountable, but you've, you've talked before about some other ways that have sort of moved that along. Can you share some of those with us? So I started not too long before COVID started. So my first six months or so, um, I was starting to get to know the campus and just starting to work on some new programs that we were going to do and forging relationships. And then, of course, with COVID, all of that got changed. During the pandemic, an incredible opportunity came up to provide our students with free menstrual cups, reusable menstrual cups. And it was something that was a great opportunity, but too much for me to figure out how to make available to students. And I was able to use different connections around campus in student affairs, in the dean of students office, in housing, in basic needs, and other programs throughout the university to work together collaboratively to make these reusable menstrual cups available to students while they were all at home, because this was in like the fall of 2020. And um, we provided more than 300 menstrual cups to students that not only helps to serve an equity issue because um, not only are menstrual products very expensive for women, but also it's a, a larger burden of course for low income women. And they're a very big part of our waste stream. And they also are not always good for women's health. So a lot of mm. natural products have really toxic chemicals in them. So this program brought together all of these different elements of sustainability and equity and affordability. And I was only able to really do it as successfully as we did because I had all these partners from different parts of campus. I like how you know, use that as an example. You know, if you ask your average person, probably even me before I got to know you, like, okay, tell me about a sustainability issue. I'd be thinking, and they're important, like, well, reducing plastic. And I'd think about reducing carbon emissions and big, big stuff like that. But it's neat that the first thing you, you share is something that kind of is a little off from what common expectations would be, you know. And, and that's kind of neat. Again, that idea of connecting across campus and problem solving is more than just one limited area. Are there other areas that you've been thinking about or feeling like the equity issues play into this problem solving and connection? We're working on a climate action plan for the university that really looks at how we can reduce our contribution to climate change. And climate change is, I mean, it's the biggest issue that we're facing as a species, but it's also a really big equity issue because climate change has greater impact on communities of color and other marginalized communities. And they also are the less, um, they're least able to respond quickly. And so looking at what we can do as a campus to ensure that we are not contributing to this issue and also how we can educate our students and employees about the things that we can do as individuals, but also how to lead in this space and how to work together and get what can we do as a community to really lift each other up and to make sure that we're creating a future that can be successful for our entire campus. You know, individualism is a huge part of American culture. And some of what you're trying to do is, I don't know, I say not go against it, but soften it or expand that vision. Um, what are some ways that, that individuals, though, can be part of this community of addressing things like climate change? The biggest thing is just to start talking about it even if it's just within your own family, but like on campus, we have a sustainability working group that the meetings are open to the public. And it's a group of faculty, staff, and students throughout the university that have primarily been working on our climate action plan, but we also work on other sustainability initiatives and strategies that are university-wide. And there's also a lot of different clubs and organizations that are available for students to join with the sustainability um, topic. And we're looking at creating a kind of like peer-to-peer -peer program for employees as well who are interested mm. in 
learning more about how to bring sustainability into the workplace and being like ambassadors or liaisons for their department. Start learning little bits about it and it adjusting the lens that you see things through. You don't have to do everything at once. You don't have to do everything perfectly. If we each just do a little bit and sustain that effort, it has a lot more impact than if you say, oh, I'm going to just make zero waste starting today. So just looking for those small ways and reaching out, like reaching out to me to say, hey, I see these challenges or these areas of opportunities. What do you think we can do? comes back to the what first got you interested, seeing that small things can make a difference cumulatively if we as a community all keep that in mind. And it's neat that if those who are beginning to talk and think that way want to continue to expand or encourage others, they have an outlet like the council that you, you've mentioned. Um, so that's, you know, you're trying to work at two ends. You're providing the opportunities as well as modeling, you know, just small, small changes that can make a big difference. Well, the concluding question that I ask for, for all of these series is, uh, what does it mean to you to channel our potential at CSU Channel Islands? To channel our potential at CSU Channel Islands, we work together as a community to address the pressing challenges of our time and to be an institution that shows how to really lead in higher education, to center our students and provide an engaging and innovative approach to education. It does create power when you look at it in a collective way that we're sending forth students and employees uh, newly equipped with a new vision. Um, you know, we've had a lot of these ups and downs as a university. As soon as we start growing, then the pandemic hits. And the how quickly we grew results in a lot of us having to be scrappy and having to be um, adaptable in the way that we do things while also taking on big challenges, like all the work we're doing with equity, diversity, and inclusion and the inclusive excellence action plan, like not turning a, a cheek to the global issues that are happening outside and within the campus, but really taking that strength and resilience and turning towards those big issues like sustainability and social justice. I hadn't really thought about the context of our university being a part of how we move forward in, in improving our sustainability vision and leading even within the CSU. You've spoken out in things that wouldn't necessarily be strictly again, like, well, less plastic waste and, and you know, conserving fuel. It's in how we work together, our scrappy little campus. And that is part of the sustainability vision too. I love it. Thanks, Roxanne. Thank you, Mark. I'm honored to have been here with you today.